everybody and welcome back to Beanie Boo Safari. Today I'm going to be showing you five unique and easy to make Beanie Boo props along with guiding you through how to make it step by step. These five props include materials that are very easy to find lying around in your house and I have tried to make them pretty easy to make. <laughs> you will learn how to make a desk lamp, packed food, a plant, a table, and a extension that looks like a sink to the table. So we have got quite a bit to get through, so let's get into the video. The first thing that I'm going to show you how to make is a desk lamp made out of a Q-tip. What you'll need for this is scissors, some glue, a Q-tip, a permanent black marker, and a button. Let's get started. The first thing that you'll need is a q-tip with a bendy center so that you'll be able to bend it in a lamp shape. Then all you need to do is bend it to the shape that you desire and cut off the second unnecessary tip. Once we've done that, then we need to find a permanent marker in the color of your choice. I'm using a metallic silver one because I want to make it appear as though it is metal. But the one that I showed you previously, I used black marker on. So then you can go ahead and color it, though leave a little bit of white space on the fluffy bit of the tip underneath so it looks as though there are lights there. Once you've colored it and let it dry if needed, you are going to take your button and your glue and glue the end of the Q-tip to the top of the button to give it a base so that it can stand. Make sure that the glue that you're using is some sort of clear drying craft glue so that it will look a lot neater and you won't have white glue on the edges of anything. I've put a big blob of glue on the button and stuck the Q-tip on top and it is quite difficult trying to find a good position to let it dry in so I found this small little clear cup and that is holding this up to make sure it doesn't fall. You have to kind of get creative to find a way to dry it, but this is my solution for now. All right, once the glue has dried on your lamp, you can call it completely done. If you want, you can do some touch-ups on the marker because I found once it was drying, the top fluffy bit got a little bit messy. So I'm gonna touch that up a bit, but other than that, it is completely finished. The next one that I was going to show you is how to make a packed food package like this. Although I wasn't able to get it in a way that I would like it, so I'm going to show you how to make a book instead. Tell me in the comments if you'd like to know how to make this though, because I would be interested to see if you guys like the look of this. I might try and make some improvements to make it a little bit more realistic without having to print something out. We'll see. This little book is the book we are going to be making. For this, you will need paper, glue, scissors, markers, a ruler and a pencil. Now it is a book with a cover on the front and back that if you don't want to print it out you can color along with a few pages on the inside that you can actually write on. So let's get into making it. First take your pencil, ruler, and piece of paper and measure out a long rectangle of 27 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters. Once that rectangle is drawn, you can cut it out. You cut it out with your ruler, measure out every three centimeters a line. You can put a tick mark on each side at the three centimeter mark, six centimeter mark, nine centimeter mark, and so on, and then draw a line between them. Once you have it all sectioned off every three centimeters, all you need to do is fold it accordion style, starting at one end and working your way to the other. So folding on the lines, fold backwards and forwards until you get to the other end. After you have finished, it should look something like this, and normally once you get to the end, there should be one shorter one, just because nobody can fold completely perfectly, and that is totally okay. Now what we are going to do is make sure that each line is completely creased and unfold it. Once you have done that, you can take your glue stick and apply a layer of glue onto all of this, making sure to go all the way to the edges, and make sure it's on the side that you have marked the lines, not the side that is completely blank. So, spread a layer of glue with your glue stick and then fold it all together. 
Once there is glue on all of this side, you can go ahead and fold it back up together just how it was, gluing together and pressing down all of the surfaces. That leaves you with this book looking collection of pages. There should be about four or five and there will be a side that still is a little bit sticky and that is totally fine. So you can just let this sit and dry while we make the cover. To make the cover, we are going to take our pencil, ruler, and paper again and measure out a smaller rectangle of 7 centimeters by 3 centimeters, and then proceed to cut it out. I cut mine out with a little bit of room on the edges so that there's a little bit of leeway in case our measurements were not exactly correct. Then proceed to fold it in half, crease it, and unfold it again. Now what you can do is on the side with no pencil, you can draw out what you want to be on the cover. Make sure that this is the front cover and this side is the back cover so that you don't have a backwards book. Also I would like to point out that you can of course print out your own cover and glue it on here. That is totally an option although I'm just going to draw mine on. With the scrapbook that I showed you earlier, I even added some binding right here so it looks as though it is wire bound. You can add fun little things like pockets at the side and little notes on the front and back and really make it your own. What helps is having really fine tipped markers so that you can get really detailed. All right, this is what I've made. It is a little notebook cover with a pink cloud pattern on it, and I think it looks really cute. Now all we need to do is take these pages we made earlier and put a layer of glue on the outside, so on this side and on this side as well. And once you have done that, flip the cover on top and press it down to dry. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and trim off the messy edges on the top, bottom, and sides. And after that, the notebook is completely finished. It, I think, has a total of eight pages that you can write on and customize yourself. The thing that I love about this is that it is so, so customizable and you can make it your own or you can make it designed after a specific Beanie Boo by designing the cover or, of course, you can play around with the sizing a little bit, make them longer or shorter. You can make more pages or less pages. The sky is really the limit. Plus, they are really fun to make. The next thing that we are going to be making is a plant. Now, it is very similar to this plant that is included in my printables, but it is quite a bit larger and more DIY, and it doesn't involve any printing. So let's get into it. The first thing you'll need is a piece of paper along with a nice green marker that will be your leaf color. And also what's handy is another piece of paper on the bottom just to protect your surface because we are going to be scribbling green in kind of a block shape to get the base color for our leaf. So all we need to do is just kind of scribble a block of green and make it fairly big because what we are going to be doing next is drawing a leaf-like shape with a small rectangle on the bottom and then cutting it out. Along with coloring some green on the back so that it is double-sided. After cutting it out, you can run the same marker along the middle once more to make a darker line in the center along with adding veins to the side to make it appear as though it is a leaf. And then after folding it in the center like so, you can unfold it and then you have one leaf. And repeat until you have as many leaves as you desire. All right, I've got about five or six leaves done. And it's pretty fun doing these because you can get pretty creative. Like you can see with this one, I took little triangles out of it and it looks kind of like it's got several branches sticking out of it. And with a couple of these, I've got little bits taking out of it, like there was a little hungry caterpillar who came along. And you can get pretty creative with the sizes and shapes too, like you can have longer ones and shorter ones, and all sorts of different kinds. So now that we have these, we are going to set them aside and then work on our plant pot. All right, this is what I'm using for the pot. It is kind of a thin black cardboard, and I think that thin cardboard that bends easily will work really well but you could also layer paper and that would be very nice because then you could color whatever color you want onto the paper 
but I like the look of this black cardboard so I'm going to use that. It is pretty thin as I said so it will be easy to bend because we are going to be curving it into a circle to make it look like a pot. Now the measurements can vary depending on how large your leaves are and how tall or short you want your pot to be. Now I'm making a fairly large one so it can just stand on its own, it doesn't have to be on a desk, though you could make a plant that can just be on a shelf or a desk or something of that sort. This piece of cardboard is something like 4 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters, so that gives you a rough idea about how large this is going to be. So the first thing that we're going to do is set this on its back so that the side that you don't want to see is facing upward. And then I'm going to lay my leaves face down on my cardboard nicely in a row and take some scotch tape and just tape them there so that they will stay. Okay, I'm done taping and I ended up adding about five taller leaves because I realized that my leaves were too small for my pot. So this is what it looks like on the back. And when you have really tall leaves, I noticed it's easier to tape them together like this so that they don't flop over when it's standing up. So one of the last steps that we need to do is curl this piece of cardboard into a circle and tape it together and then you should be finished. So I rolled it into a cylinder and then just put a piece of tape on the back and I think it looks actually a lot better than I thought it would. I think it will fit in with a lot of my scenes that I do and it looks super super cute. One thing that I do recommend is putting larger leaves at the back and smaller leaves in the front so it gives you this kind of cone effect that makes it look like a real plant. And I do love the effect of adding a slightly darker layer of veins. The next thing that I'm going to show you how to make is a paper table. Now the first step is to draw something that looks like this. So it is somewhat a rectangle which has 19 centimeters going across this way, 4 centimeters this way, going in 5 millimeters, down 4.5 centimeters, and then across 18 centimeters, back up 4.5 centimeters, outward 5 millimeters, and then 4 centimeters again. And then at the 4.5 centimeter mark on both sides, you need to draw a line all the way down, going down to the 18 centimeter line. And then repeat on that side, so at the 4.5 centimeter mark, going this way, then you go down. And then where the divot goes in at the 5 millimeter, you go across. Now I know that is a lot to chew, but you can replay this video a few times. Once you've got that all measured out, you can cut out the full thing, making sure not to go up any of these lines yet. And after you've cut it out, you can decorate it with markers and something like that to make it the kind of table that you like. But keep in mind that this square and this square will not be shown. This square is going to be the bottom of the table along with this one and this one and then this is going to be the top counter. Alright, I have decorated it completely and I decorated it to make it look like a bathroom cabinet kind of counter thing because I don't have many things that look like that. So that is kind of the design that I went for. So after you have designed it, all you need to do is cut slits on this line and on the opposite line just like that, but not on this line like this. Once the slit has been cut, all you need to do is apply glue on this square and this square, and then I'll show you how to fold it. Another thing that is helpful is creasing on all of the lines that you're going to need to fold on. So creasing on this line, this line, this line, this line, and of course this one. Now the glue has been applied, and the last thing that we need to do is fold this downward and then this one inward to just collapse just like that into a table and then repeat on the other side to finish off the countertop. After you press and hold and wait for it to dry, your countertop is complete. I think the addition of the cabinets at the bottom is really, really cute and I highly recommend that. Also, adding a texture to the top helps it not become so plain. Anyway, you can make all sorts of designs like this, and I even have my printables, which use the same sort of concept. The last thing that I'm going to show you 
is how to make this counter that we just previously made into a counter top with a sink. Let's get started. Firstly, you need to find a bottle cap that is fairly small but not too small. Something that will be able to fit comfortably right here. This is going to be kind of the bowl of our sink and what the majority of the sink is made of. So I've got this cap that is from a juice bottle which will work perfectly. Now what you need to do is find a nice piece of thin cardboard. It doesn't have to be anything pretty. It doesn't have to look nice unless you don't mind not coloring it or painting it or covering it with something once it is finished. So yeah, just some thin cardboard that is easily bendable and but that will still support the weight of this bottle cap. And then you are going to take a pencil and trace the top of the bottle cap along with including a ring around it as even as you can. Alright, I've drawn my two circles and it's best to leave the outer layer larger rather than smaller and if it's too large then we can always trim a bit off. All right, the next step is to cut all the way around the circle and cut out this circle in between so you're left with a ring. Okay, now that we've finished cutting out the ring, we are going to take some duct tape, rip a small strip off, cut slits so that it can curve, put the unfrayed bit on the cap, and align the cardboard on top, pressing down the duct tape to make it form the edges, and then repeat until the tape goes all the way around. Now that all that is secure, you can choose to decorate your rim however you would like. I'm actually going to use some aluminum tape, which is like this kind of tape that appears to be metal and would look super cool if it was a sink, but you can color it in marker, you could leave it the color of your cardboard, or you could cover it in paper or just really anything you would like. Right, now that that is all nicely covered, we are going to work on installing it in the table. All right, so what we're gonna do is trace the cap, not this rim, but just the cap on the counter and make sure that there's no overhang so the cap is completely inside of it. And then once we've traced it, we can cut out a little cavity. I have cut a hole right here matching the bottle cap and now you can just set the sink bit inside and it will just rest right there. It is a little bit heavy for the table, but I think you can handle it. So now one of the last steps that we need to do is trim off this excess bit so that it can actually go against the wall. Now we need to make the tap part by taking a paper clip and bending it outward and cutting right here to make a tap-like shape. I even added a little aluminum foil tip for extra detail. And then all you need to do is glue it in place and wait for it to dry. We have the finished product. This sink is very versatile and you can even make it into a kitchen sink if you have a kitchen-like cabinet. And of course it is removable so you could probably lay a piece of paper on there and nobody would ever know that a sink once stayed there. Alright everybody, that is it for today's video. This sink was the fifth and final DIY that I wanted to show you. I really, really do hope that this tutorial video helped you out and maybe gave you some inspiration or gave you ideas to put in your own skits and stuff. And I hope that you can put these tutorials to good use in the future. And I apologize if this video is extremely long. I didn't actually realize how long it would take to explain all of these things, but I will have time marks in the bar so you will be able to skip around a little bit. But yeah, that is the end of the video. I won't linger too long in the intro. I hope you guys have a super fantastic day. Remember to not worry and beanie happy and goodbye.